You know what, folks? Uh, typically, when it comes to House of Pain, you know, I do my standard episode reviews, and, well, I have no earthly idea what BET is doing with the promotions for this and Assisted Living this season because, you know, they used to put out trailers for both shows. I mean, they would have, like, a 30-second promo with uh, highlighting Family Fun Night. Then they'd focus on, on the next House of Pain. And then, you know, we get a segment about that. And it's like, followed by the next new episode of Assisted Living. And then we get a segment about that. But this time around, I don't know what they're doing. They don't really give fans an idea of what the next episode is going to be. You just got to, you know, reach your hand in the cereal box and hope you get a prize instead of just basic cereal. So uh, now this uh, season of House of Pain, I just do my episode reviews. And if we happen to get an episode clip or some interesting photos and maybe an extended synopsis, I might talk about that, but that's it. And outside of my standard episodes or you know videos about house of pain usually it's in relation to calvin and miranda or something like that but this time around i wanted to change it up by um talking about the subject of drugs and how they're actually being you know um handled in the reboot because there have been a number of times when uh you know drug use or even, you know, legal drug use has been brought up and it's been pretty interesting to see how that's been handled. So, uh, obviously you can tell this is in reference to the original series and then the, uh, Janine is an addict storyline, uh, that still has so much weight to it, even in 2024. But I find it interesting, especially when you look at Malik, for example, in his, uh, you know, political career that he's trying to get started and he's working on a campaign with someone, um, you know, if I'm not mistaken, trying to legalize, you know, uh, drug uses or if, if I'm not mistaken, like marijuana or, or weed or something like that. As a non-drug user myself, I honestly don't really pay too much attention to these kind of laws since they don't really apply to me because I don't really use that stuff. So, you know, I, I'm aware of those things called uh, edibles and this, that and a third, but it's never really phased me. Uh, just short story long. Just kidding. Long story short. I think one of the reasons I myself never had a desire to smoke mainly has to do with my parents both being smokers. So growing up in a house that constantly reeked of tobacco smoke leading to like my clothes smelling like it and my things smelling like it and having, you know, to try to get the smell off before I went to school or something like that was incredibly annoying. So that to me was a massive turn off to even trying to smoke, not to mention Given that my voice is, you know, my main source of employment, given that I talk and everything for my videos and, you know, this, that, and the third, I don't want to risk having any sort of like throat or lung damage due to, uh, you know, smoking. <laughs> kind of random, but I think about the Temptations, for example, how Eddie Kendricks, one of the most incredible voices in music, not just R&B and soul, but just music in general, uh, died of lung cancer due to just the incredible amount of smoking he did during his lifetime. So my thing is this, I never want to, you know, do anything to my body that can ruin my voice. And I mean, when it comes to drinking, I don't really have much of a story with that one. I, I mean, I've tried beer and wine. It, it, it's not for me. Never been drunk. You know, I, like I said, I've tried it and I was legal age. So it was like, I was a kid. No, no, I tried it. Um, not out of peer pressure, but just out of curiosity. And I'm like, you know what? This isn't for me. Now, why? Yeah, if it's a fancy event or something like a family function, and it, the, yeah, maybe I'll take like a small glass, but that that's it. I don't drink either. And again, this isn't meant to be a personal, you know, hey, here's a PSA as to why I don't smoke or drink. It's more like if something in this video you feel like, man, I wish Jeremy would have went in debt with it a bit more. It's because in my own personal life, I don't have a real attachment to these things. So, you know, just want to put that out there. But in case of House of Pain, I think for me, it really is kind of uh, up and down as to how these things are handled. Now, for me, I find it interesting that Malik would want to be in a position where he would, you know, support someone who legalizes you know narcotics despite the fact that his mom was an addict due to her usage of such things when he was a kid but i think in an earlier season there was an episode i really didn't like i like 
on the one hand, I really admired it Malik's determination. Because if I remember correctly, he was trying to make a pet a petition or something or, you know, um, you know, throw a pitch at City Hall. I think it had to do with um people in the community who were getting these just ridiculous uh, you know, court sentences because of, you know, either drug uses or carrying drugs. If like, you know, a nickel bag or something, they get like 15 years or something. CJ showed no remorse whatsoever. Whereas Malik was trying to be more understanding. And if I, and look, like I said, it's been quite a while since this episode aired. So, I mean, I know I reviewed it cause I felt the same way I did, um, you know, back then that I do today. CJ was just, to be honest, kind of an asshole the entire episode. And I'm thinking, Wow, CJ, you would think you of all people would be a bit more understanding given the fact that your wife was going through it. But then again, it kind of makes sense because of the fact that CJ was understandably, you know, unshakable and not really giving Janine any sort of, you know, grace or forgiveness because let's be real, she ruined their lives, you know, doing these drugs behind his back, lying about where she was going. Um burnt the house down, causing him and his children to be uprooted and move in with his aunt and uncle, dealing with the stress of trying to, you know, get back on track so he can move out, uh, you know, going through the motions of trying to find another woman. And then it's just a whole mess. But at the same time, you would think with him seeing what his wife went through, he would be like, well, well, you know, maybe there's a way to help out. But I, I don't know. It's just weird how CJ was just so you know, just dickheaded in that episode. And Malik, on the other hand, I like the fact that he's trying to be more understand. I think it comes from the different dynamics of him being a kid when his mom was an addict versus his dad, obviously being an adult, watching his spouse go through that. Uh, there are different angles, not to mention if it was for Miss Ella, you know, there's no telling what would have happened to Janine in the long term because um, Ella was the only one to really help her out. And, you know, Ella was preaching the forgiveness and CJ, you got to forgive. But it wasn't until Janine screwed over Ella. If I, I forgot if she either stole something from her or she went to rehab on Ella's dime, but then quit early. It was something like that. And Ella got pissed off and then Janine finally got her act together. But, um, yeah, I, it just feel is weird that, you know, the dynamic of drugs has, kind of shaped the kids. I mean, when you look at Jasmine in the last season, she mentioned how she was going back to college and she'd study, you know, um, like psychology or something so she can help out, you know, women who are, you know, you know, um, unfortunate, whether it be through like physical abuse or drug abuse, something like that. So it was kind of funny how Miss Ella kind of had an influence or well, Auntie Ella had an influence on her niece in regards to, you know, well, look at what Ella does at the, you know, church's help center for the community. And then given the fact that her mom was also an addict and yeah, it makes sense that, you know, in a way Jasmine would focus on a career path that can help her in terms of helping others who are going through the misfortunes that life puts them through. And then you look at Malik, who's working on the political side trying to figure out ways to help out those who are less fortunate due to circumstances where the law is stacked up against them. So I really do like the fact that in some ways drugs have, even though their mom was addicted at some point, at, in some way it has shaped what Jasmine and uh, Malik want to do with their futures. Uh, you could think of Janine on, I mean, Jasmine on the more psychological and, you know, side trying to help out people, you know, through her degree. And not to mention, she had a big social media following from her, you know, advice from Jazzy kind of thing. And then Malik trying to do things on the more political side. Now, it does feel a bit heavy handed at times. because I get Jasmine is going to be Jasmine um, in terms of being sassy and throwing shade. But, you know, constantly, you know, talking about, oh, is this person a pothead and this, that and the third? It does feel kind of weird coming from her mouth because yet again, her mom was a pothead at one point. Maybe it's because she was younger than Malik because I remember one episode uh, Malik had just had it. He was pissed off because I think it was after Janine had a uh, had gotten over her addiction and she like wanted to drop the kids at school. Malik didn't want it because 
he dealt with so much harassment and bullying because his mom was an addict. So obviously he would have to deal with that in school, which, you know, t side note, that's something that's crazy. I mean, I remember as a uh, growing up watching the news back in the day, you seen like Britney Spears, this, or, you know, um, and, or this celebrity that, and you think about, wow, it's like on the one hand, being a celebrity kid must be great because you live in the, you know, the lap of luxury riches and whatnot but at the same time if your parent who's famous goes through a bunch of stuff publicly imagine growing up and like somebody always pulling up the past and this is like i'm talking like the 90s early 2000s but now the internet age where anyone's history is accessible by the push of a button you're never going to live down like <laughs> remember when your mom got was crazy and shaved you know her head off or you know oh remember when um your dad beat up rihanna that kind of thing it's like wow kids can be really cruel but and then nowadays i feel like even the average every day, average everyday person will go through this especially like huh your mom has an only fans man it's just crazy how kids can be like that but yeah i think drug uses is an interesting topic i think season one was kind of the worst though because i felt like there was potential but we didn't do anything with it um Jasmine's boyfriend, who was the son of the preacher, I forget his name, but it was, he was portrayed by the dude that um looked like Chris Brown. He offered Janine like a hit of his like vape or something, and then we went to commercial break. And I'm like, we're we're not gonna. Th this is a big moment, like you know, a former addict being offered you know a hit of something by a guy who doesn't know any better. Like we didn't. Th this could have been so good story wise, but we didn't do anything with it. So I feel like the show dropped the ball sometimes with it, but other times it brings up interesting conversations. Curtis is always going to bring up, you know, jokes about Janine's past. That's who he is. But, and I'm not saying we need like a, oh, we need to have a, a complete story arc where Janine recounts her past about being an addict, but it would be nice to have it mentioned in a, in a form of importance, you know? I mean, heck, why don't we even have flashbacks to the original show sometimes? That would be pretty cool. But yeah, that's just my two cents on the subject. How do you feel about, um, you know, the usage of, or not the usage, but the subject of drugs and how it's being handled in the reboot? And I think another time it could have been brought up, well, Janine's past, I think it was the season finale of season 10 when Lisa was trying to um, show Janine as she was coming home from uh, New York or something that, hey, you think of me as a stripper, but I can actually be a housewife. And then, you know, Malik got on her about trying to, you know, prove herself. And it's like, look, my family is in picture perfect. We've been through a lot. And because she looked at Janine like, you know, this high sedity woman, when in reality, that's not who she was, you know, back in the original show. And yet that could have been brought up, but we never did. So, yeah, it's hit and miss. But, you know, hey, what do you think? Like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.